Good morning, folks. Terrific article linked alongside this monsoon rundown from this summer in India. Springtime saw drought mixed with boulder-sized hail, but the season of rain affected more than just India. Myanmar and Nepal have seen major landslide and flash flood risks, while the high water wreaks havoc in Pakistan and Afghanistan where it meets the rain left over from Europe. North and eastern bits of those Middle Eastern nations still have people stranded. Here, looking courtesy of John Ashcroft via spaceweather.com, an earth grazing meteor from the constellation Perseus. For those who don't know, we are at the doorstep of the peak meteor event of the year. Got a good shot at seeing them between 10 p.m. and sunrise this weekend. Speaking of sunrise, a bunch of planets with comet ice on still not visible, but definitively in the mix. If you have ice on fever, there are a dozen or so videos for you to watch on the official Observing Campaign website. They held a two-day workshop and decided to share everything with us, a top recommendation. Folks, the mass of clouds at the south pole of our galaxy is actually just outside it. Two small satellite structures to our galaxy, dwarf galaxies in fact, at the small and large cloud masses to the right. Coming back down to Earth, the see tropical storm Ator dropping major rain throughout its cell and will spend the weekend in the Philippines before heading for China. Henriette definitively swung south and has lost her eye as she weakens. In last night's news, I questioned whether the solar wind revealed CME impact or a coronal hole stream. The speed ramp with the density on ACE gave me pause. However, SOHO three-day telemetry clearly shows a front-leading density spike out ahead of the faster particles. I was wrong yesterday when I called it the CME. They catch up to the slower particles like an electromagnetic shovel and bunch up those protons for the initial interplanetary shock wave before the speedier particles. The stream has begun to affect Earth's magnetic shield, but not by much. Electron flux taking the brunt of this blow so far, still awaiting the larger impact from these CMEs. It's really telling of a pathetic solar max when a C2 solar flare sets the comet section on fire. There are still no real dangerous sunspots, but that new group identified last night popped the sea flare and looks to be growing. The eruption was not massive, but I'll come back to it in 3 or 4 angstroms to close. But quickly first, primary magnetic connection still around the backside, but two subconnectivity points have jumped to the new coronal hole group. We know the larger level fields are leaving this area wide open to Earth, but the lower level fields could interfere going forward. Quake Watch score is 6, but likely to hit 7 tonight and still trending upward. Plasma filament facing Earth is one big fat eruption threat. Let's come back to 304 for the CME from the sea flare. Compare this tiny eruption to our Earth, still thousands of times smaller than certain X flares. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.35 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.